is good. But moving right along, uh, my next guest up, I'm very proud to have him on the show. Yeah. He's been in a bunch of TV and movies. He started off with Goodfellas to the Bronx Tale, Black Donnelly's Analyze This, That, The Other Thing. Uh, been in a lot of TV and movie appearances. Let's give it up for Joseph D'Anafio, everybody. <laughs> Joseph. Thank you for coming, Thank buddy. You. Thanks for having me. How are you? It's a pleasure being here. Thanks, man. Thanks for that introduction. It was nice. You know what? Out of all the actors, you, you were the fastest I ever got on the show in the amount of time that we talked to each other. I talked to you, what, two weeks ago? And you're here. Hey, listen. Dynamite. You know, very humble guy. Yeah, definitely. Some now of listen, these guys... We... Thank yeah, I'm you. sorry. No, some of these guys, yeah, they, like, pull their leg. I mean, we won't mention names. Oh. But, go ahead. <laughs> listen, we got a lot going on here. I'm gonna, we're going to take it back a little, okay? okay. You got your big break with Robert De Niro working on Goodfellas, then yeah. on to the Bronx Tale. Why don't you tell us all how it all started and the experience it was for you? Well, first off, it was a great experience, and I'm grateful to Robert De Niro. And just, it happened when I just, my agent gave me a call, and she's like, listen, you want to be in a movie? Because I did a lot of commercials. I was mm -hmm. one of those cute kids. So I was like, all right, sure. So I went up, I took a picture, and... Um, like three weeks later, they're like, you got a meeting with Marty Scorsese. I was like, all right, sure. And I went up, and um, a couple of weeks later, I, I, had, I got the part. And they were like, you got the part. You got to come down and do it. You got to meet Robert De Niro and Ray Liotta. And we did the movie. And then when I was doing the movie, uh, De Niro had asked me, he's like, listen, I'm thinking of doing a movie. Would you be interested in, you know, doing a reading for me? Uh -huh. I was like, sure, no problem. You know, and I went down, and it was for the Bronx Tale. And, you know, we did the reading. And the next thing you know, it was like, Joe, we want you to be in the Bronx Tale. And before that, we did a movie, a little movie called Night in the City. Oh, you that I had that? a little part in it with, right. with Bob. And he, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm really grateful to him that, you know, he gave me the shot. And, you know, I learned so much from him just watching him and yeah. everything he did. And, you know, it, it, it's just an awesome process, you know? Just working with De Niro, I mean, that's a dream come true. I love that. I mean, how was it working with Joe Pesci? Well, I really never got a chance to work with him because we weren't in any scenes together. Okay. That's but I mean, true. but hanging out with him on the set, anything? I never even met the guy to be honest. Get with Get out of here! But working with De Niro was, I mean, me and him like he he would me and him would improv together, and it was just so great to like like and analyze that. Mm -hmm. It's like that whole scene, none of that's in the script. That was just like me and him, just like going at it, like getting into the character and being the character. That was a great scene. Definitely. And it's great when you, you know, when you got a guy like that, like, that's improv with you, man. And I'm just so, I'm just grateful for it, you know? And legends, you know? It's like so surreal, like you're looking in his face and you're like, I'm here with Robert De Niro. But I mean, working with a guy like that probably gives you that edge and gets you to the best you could be. Well, to me, it's just like, I mean, ever since I started out, it's like, I just treated them like regular people. Like, yeah. I come to the set, and I'm just like, hi, how you doing? How's everything? You know, we do our job, and mm -hmm. we be professionals about it, and, you know, we go home, and, you know, I don't, you know, I try not to really get caught up in the fame game, you know, yeah. like, yeah. oh, this and that and that, because I see other people doing it, and, you know, they don't like that. No, you no, can't. You got to lay back. You got to be, you got to lay back, stay in the background, let them come to you, I guess, right? Well, you know, just, yeah, let them come to you. I mean, you know, sometimes when you're not famous, you know, it's hard because, you know, people, you know, people want to, you know, be your friends for certain reasons. Yep. And right. You got to watch out. You know, you got to be very careful. I mean, working on The Bronx Tale, I mean, your role in that was a lot more in depth. I mean, preparing <laughs> for that, was that overwhelming for you? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was great because, you know, I had De Niro directing that. Yeah. And he really gave me a lot of input. I mean, the actors we had weren't really actors. They were kids they picked up from the street. Yeah. And, um, you know, he really gave me, like, full range of, like, to, you know, do what I want and help them get into scenes. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was great because Bob did an interview on a Chevy Chase show once. And Chevy Chase says, yeah, I heard you're doing this with, like, people that from the streets. And he goes, yeah, except for two, Chaz Palminteri and Joseph D'Onofrio. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's it's great. Like, Robert De Niro just said my name on TV. I was very, I was very happy. And, you know, yeah. I started getting phone calls and, you know, you know, and just grateful. And, yeah, I guess it, it had a little... A little, a little preparation in that, you know? <laughs> but you know what it is? Goodfellas is going to go down in history. That's like our generation of the Godfather. Yeah. And it's, it's Definitely. like everyone in America and around the world knows Goodfellas. Mm. And uh, if they know Goodfellas, most of them know the Bronx Tale. You know what I mean? So you're in two classic icons. And, you know, you should be proud of that. Yeah, it's funny. I am proud. But sometimes it's funny. I'll be walking in the street <laughs> and somebody will say, some, it happened to me a couple of times, like somebody in a different language will say, like, good fellas to me. And I'll look at them and I'll be like, like, good fella, good fella, good fella. And I'll be like, oh, I guess they're like, hey, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. And they don't know English. Yeah, yeah. All they know is the movie. 
And, you know, they'll say, hey, say, how you doing, Hendry? You know, say, Hendry got pinched. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm just grateful. I'm just like, hey, how you doing? And, you know, I'm nice and, you know, you know, people, love, people like me. People like my work and I'm just grateful that they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah Definitely, absolutely. for sure. Now, to get away from that for a little while, uh, you're playing the role of Staten Island Mike, right? Mm -hmm. On this new TV show, Are We There Yet? Yes, sir. How did that come about and uh, what's the experience with that? What's going on with it? Oh, it's a great experience. I'm working with uh, Terry Crews from mm -hmm. Everybody Hates Chris, Ali Leroy, and a lot of great actors and actresses. And it's just great because it's comedy. Yeah. And I love doing comedy. And it's like, you know, playing Staten Island Mike, it's like something I really never done before. So it's really good. It's on channel TBS. Okay. And it came about what was, I seen they were doing the show and they were looking for a Rob Schneider type. And the show's supposed to be in Seattle. So this guy, Todd Taylor, was casting it. And I know Todd. He actually casted me in the Bronx Tale. Wow. And I told him, I was like, Todd, you know, maybe you should have me up for this part. And he was like, you know what? Let's bring you up. So I went in, and they were like, oh, we love Joe, but we don't know how, you know, it's in Seattle. What are we going to do? <laughs> and they were like, just call him Staten Island Mike. So boom, that's how hey, it happened. Uh, and then we started, I did one episode. It was on the pilot. Uh -huh. And then they were like, you know what? They got, just got picked up for 90 episodes. I'm right. like, listen, we're gonna we're gonna fit you in. You know, you're not gonna be in all 90. For well, any time they call me and they ask me to be in one, I just go up there and I try to do the best I could and you know, do what I gotta do. It's great. That's dynamite. You got a role in this, right? Yeah. You got a, you bought a role in this TV show? Yeah, of course I bought a role of it. So right, control room. Definitely. Let's check out this scene. It's that Alan Mike. How you doing? Staten Island Mike. I'm here for the get-together. Hi. Come on in. Am I the only one here? Yes, you're the only one here. I got some banging potato salad. Thank you. Who shows up for a party at 9 a.m.? Party? I thought this was a get-together. You're right. It's not a party. It's a get-together. Follow me. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> It ain't that type of get-together. Let's go. Honey! Guess who's here? Nick. Nick. Hmm? Oh. Who is that? Nick. It's Staten Island Mike. He's here for your get-together. What's up, brother? He brought some banging potato salad. And that's the goods, man. What is wrong with you, man? Nice. Congratulations. That's totally out of the box for you. If that's good. That's what, you know, that shows your skills. Moving along, you're also doing something in Miami with the Gangster Movie Convention. Why don't you tell everybody about that? That's something called the Don, the Don's Con. Okay. It's a bunch of people that have been in gangster movies and real gangsters. Wow. We even got Henry Hill Henry coming Hill? Out. Oh, really? Yeah, so, Jeez. you know, it's going to be really good. If you go to thedonscon.com, okay. you can check it out. It's like, you know, we're sitting down, we're going to be giving out autographs. They have like a VIP party that you could go to. They're going to have like a sit-down dinner. Mm -hmm. oh, They're going to have like a party. It's really good. I never really got invited to these, but um, my friend Chris Cerrone, who played young Henry Hill, yes. called me up and asked me, you know, if I'd be involved. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Well, you know, so like it's fun. great. We're going to be in Miami. I think it's May 12th to the 15th. Okay. And I'm really excited. And, you know, it's it's going to be really fun. And, you know, if anybody's out there and you want to come down and meet gangsters and people in gangster movies, come down. We'll be there. Yeah, Chris oh, is a good kid. It. I met him at the Chiller Expo last year. Nice guy. Oh, he's awesome. Nice guy. It's funny to see him, all you guys. Well, you pretty much look the same when you were younger. <laughs> you just look older. But you got that baby yeah, face. Yeah, definitely. I yeah. think he can change. He looks older, but he still looks young. Mm. You know? So, but it's, it's, uh, He's missing it's the hat. It's ironic. The hat. <laughs> hey, you look young yourself, man. You look good. That's it. Yeah. I just turned 30 years old. <laughs> you can't beat that, right? Don't clap, people. <laughs> <laughs> now, a real man doesn't uh, reveal his age. <laughs> You know, so, but listen, why don't you talk a little, tell everybody who, who don't know all the movies, your n name a bunch, roll them off the top of your head that uh, you've been in. I mean, I mean, to me, it's like, it's no big deal, but, you know, Jungle Fever, Analyze That, Goodfellas, The Bronx Tale, I Love Trouble, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I mean, We Own the Night. Yeah. I've been in, a, if you go to IMDB and just look up my name, you could see it. I just finished, I got like four movies in the can right now, uh -huh. and I got like three movies that I'm actually getting ready to do. I just finished a pilot for Fox 
called uh, Weekends at Bellevue. Oh, cool. <laughs> so that, who, if that gets picked up, that's going to be good. That's going to start in July. But if it don't, you know, I'm grateful just to do whatever I yeah. did and, you know, something else will come along. You know what I liked a lot? That got canceled for some reason, the Black Donnellys. Yeah. That was a dynamite show. Yeah. It was on NBC. I didn't get a 10 o'clock it was on. It was too violent for the networks. But I thought that was a dynamite yeah. show. Yeah. I mean, you had a lot of heavy hitters on there. You had Paul Haggis directing. You had Bobby Moresco, which are great people, mm -hmm. and it was really good. And they actually were going to bring me back in the third season because I died. I don't know. In the first episode, I died. Yeah. But you've seen me, like, in the other episodes. What was your part again? I was Louis Downtown. Yeah, Louis I was Downtown, the, guy the they gambler. Killed. The Donleys killed me. They had you tied up in the basement. Yeah, but they were going to bring me back as the twin brother like two years later, but I had to lose like 30 pounds, they said. Get Everything out of here. was set up. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, man. great, great. And then they were like, oh, I got canceled. I was like, hey, what are you going to do? But Bobby's, Bobby's always doing something. So who knows? Maybe we'll get me in something else. If not, I'm grateful just to do that. I think that would have would have went off big time if it was like on HBO or something. Yeah. HBO Showtime and, and have it as a series like that. Uh, Forget about it. You had great actors on there. I mean, Jonathan Tucker. Yeah. You had the kid from Lassie and... Just everybody, the women, the guys, it was really good. What was Too the bad. guy's name who played Doogie in that? Doogie, was that uh, Peter Green? Yes, the blonde-headed yeah. guy, Peter great Green. actor. Yeah, Peter's good. Good character actor. Yeah, I did a short with him a, a little while ago called The Shoemaker, as a matter of fact. And he, he was in it, he's a nice guy. I like working with him. Mm. You brought me back with Jungle Fever, but <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. Now I'm going to have to watch it to see where you are. Well, I was one of the can I was uh, one of the candy store guys. I was Patty. Oh, okay. I had like a long tail. I was young. I, had I don't remember long... that movie that well. <laughs> they cut like this. They gave me like a shaved head over here, and then I had a long yeah, tail. Yeah, the mullet. They, yeah, they made me cast. They made <laughs> me grow my hair. Spike see me. He was like, "Grow your hair. I want to put a tail on you." Oh gosh. And I was like, "Yeah." And everything, you know, everything came from Goodfellas and the Bronx Tale, and you know, De Niro and Scorsese because Spike see me in that, and uh -huh. he got me for that, and then you know, everything like worked its way out. You know what I mean? And, I'm just grateful. I mean, I really didn't even know I was going to be into acting until I started doing that. And, you know, just working with all these great actors and directors, you learn so much. Yeah. And just try to be open and, you know, willing to learn from these guys. You yeah, know what I sure. Mean? It's right. awesome. Well, my next question to you is a little bit out of the left field, but I'm told to ask you that if you were a superhero, <laughs> what superpower would you like to possess? Well, what? my superpower would have to be... I have to be positivity man. <laughs> Positive. Oh, okay, that's good. I'd like to turn all the unkind people into kind people. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Because I believe, you know, I believe in karma and what comes around goes around. Yeah. And I try to be nice to as many people as I could. And, you know, if somebody's not nice to me, that's fine. I'm right. still nice to them. And, you know, I just do what I got to do, you know? That's My a favorite... good quality. It's hard to do that. It is hard to do, but, you know, it's... It takes practice, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta, it's, it's not worth it to have all that stress and be mean and rude and like, you know. It's easy to be nice than to be mean. And my motto is, is you know, treat others the way you want to be treated yourself. So, I agree Definitely. with that. That's, very cool. That's for sure. Now, as you do, you did a lot of drama. And I know sh you like to do comedy. These oh, days, yeah. what would you rather be doing? I mean, I love comedy, but I'll do I'll do anything. Do it doesn't whatever matter. It takes, right? I mean, you know, if if they call me up to do a drama, I'll do a drama. If they call me to do comedy, I'll do comedy. I mean, I guess they're both good. I mean, to me, comedy's easier because it's just like you know, like the show. Are we there yet? It's like I just go to the set and you know they write and they're just like you know, I practically like do what I want really. Like I improv and you know, yeah. But not too much where like I go off 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 the page. You know, but I just try to do funny things. And, you know, comedy's great, but drama's good, too. You know, dra drama, I think, is a little harder because, you know, you got to really, like, get into the character and be like, mm. Yeah. You know, if you got to, like, kill somebody, it's like, mm. Well, mostly, all, like, yeah, all your roles are like that. It's like, you know, it's like, but if comedy's just like, you know, you're having fun. Yeah. It's like, hey, what's going on? You know, you're joking around. Right. But it doesn't matter to me. Whatever, whatever, they, whatever they want, they want. Now, listen, before we wrap this up, what's in the future for Joe D'Anafrio? The future, like I said, I got, I got this film I'm supposed to be doing that I'm playing actually an ex-gangster that turns into, a, what is it, a, a psychologist that helps kids out. Wow. So that's something good that I'm looking forward to. Something and I different. got the pilot. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just auditioning and, you know, just, just, what's, just being a good person, you know what I mean? Just trying to be nice and, you know, be a positive, a positive force in society. That's a dynamite thing. Yeah. You're a role model to me. But Thank Joe, you. best of luck with everything. Thank, Thank you, you so much yes, for coming on the show. Let's give it up for Joe D'Anafio, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. You keep getting better and better guesses yes, and once go on. That's a good interview.